So let's get into the little year of uh, 2008, 2009, when Drag Race came around. It was the first season. Now, it premiered on Logo. Yes. And let me ask you, like, how much time before had you had between the phone call or, like, between the meeting with RuPaul and getting the position to when you guys started shooting? Not much. One day in 2008, I get this email from World of Wonder and Randy Barbato, who I knew from New York. And they said, do you want to, and it wasn't them, it was people who work with them. Do you want to come in and audition for a new show called RuPaul's Drag Race that we're developing? And I'd never met RuPaul. And I thought, this is, I'd auditioned for a million shows. And by the way, not because I wanted to, because people asked me to. Yeah. And I'd done a bunch of little TV things. I'd worked at MTV. And I don't know, somebody once said to me, why don't you come in and read to be a VJ on VH1? And I thought, there, there's not a chance in hell that they're going to hire me. They're going to hire some perky, waspy person with no personality. I am the opposite of that person. So I went to all these auditions thinking, hey, this would be fun if it happened. I didn't really care that much. And I kept getting really close. I even auditioned to be a host of like a Bravo or a Discovery show. And I was like, oh my God, and agents were wanting to, you know, work with me. But I would, it would never come to fruition. And at this point I was burnt out. It was like two years of auditioning. And I just thought, I'm not doing this anymore. It's too disappointing and it's too much work. And Sure enough, I get this thing, you know, would you come in and meet RuPaul for this show? And I thought, drag, right? Like, drag was not happening. And <laughs> I live in West Hollywood, so I would know. And it just seemed kind of like a thing from, like, the 80s. You know, yeah. it seemed very retro. And I thought, I don't, I don't want to do that. I really wanted to get back to writing for magazines and write more books and whatever. And then I got a second email saying, um, RuPaul and Randy Barbato, who's, of course, one of the founders of World of Wonder and the TV show, would like you to come in. And, and didn't you get our email? And I thought, oh, I'm really being rude. You know, that's <laughs> so I went over there with no expectations, didn't really even dress up. And suddenly they put me in a room with RuPaul. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that was going to happen. And I was somewhat intimidated. And Ru was just completely relaxed and cool. And we wound up talking about like world history and politics and mixed in with culture. It was a truly deep and complex conversation that I never expected to have. And at the time, I didn't really know anybody else like that who could have that kind of conversation. I've had some very smart friends, but mm -hmm. I was probably in a kind of boring little rut at that moment. <laughs> Anyway, they, all they did was stick us in a room and hold up a camera, and it was like the worst lighting in the world. So there was lighting. no drag talk during that? No, nope, not one thing. Not so one joke. crazy. <laughs> not one, have you ever been to a drag show? Even though, look, I lived in New York in the 80s. My life was a drag show. <laughs> I was thought, surprised they didn't ask me about that, but I guess they figured I would figure it out. And then, like, two days later, I get this email saying well you're hired and we start on this day and here's your contract and this is what you'll get paid and I was like what how did, how did that even happen but I thought okay sign the contract I have a lawyer he read it believe me it was very little money but it, you know all money is good money and it, it yeah. was like fun work and we showed up at this studio and I'd say it was August of 2008 it must have been 150 degrees in Burbank. We were at the worst possible oh. studio. With the, I mean, the air conditioning probably, you know, they had to shut it off every time the yeah. camera rolled. So we were dying. We had excellent hair and makeup people, though. And that was really a blessing. And in fact, I had kind of short hair then. It was kind of like a little bob. And never again did I have short hair after that because I learned everything about hair and makeup from these people. And one of my friends actually said, you need to get some, a uh, hairdresser, you need to get some extensions in your hair because you're going to be sitting there with these queens wearing five wigs. You know, <laughs> like you can't have normal hair on this show. And I thought, he's probably right. So then I got hair extensions and then I had like big, fabulous hair. And that was so much fun. Ah, oh, 
well, well, you, you know, you, you get on this first season and, you know, everybody talks about the blur filter and they want to know, <laughs> did, was somebody putting oil on that? Was there butter? Like how, how did that happen? Like, did you know about it? All I knew, because, you know, we weren't involved with lighting and technical yeah. or anything. We were dealing with our own, like, outfits and lines. And we had, again, great makeup people who were powdering us every second. I was very nervous always because nobody wrote anything for us. So it's like, what's mm. the snappiest, funniest thing I could say in this moment? It was always, luckily, I was often at the end of the panel. So three people would talk before <laughs> I did. So I was like. Oh, I should say, oh, yeah, no, that's smart. When I heard the name Angina, I thought, oh, my dear, this just sounds like a cross between a heart attack and a yeast infection, I, was, I have to admit. <laughs> but I do remember RuPaul saying to producers and camera people, put some more stuff on that lens. You know, <laughs> oh, I don't, that lighting sucks and pull it back. And I thought, what are we going to look like? And I never watched the monitor, you know. I didn't see mm -hmm. any rushes or anything till the night that show came on, and I was like, "You look so weird. We look like we're in dreamland." And not long after we came on, somebody wrote on social media somewhere, "Oh, now I understand why RuPaul's Drag Race looks like it's got like heavy gel on the lens and it's all dreamy because they're shooting in heaven. They've all died, <laughs> and they're shooting in heaven." <laughs> I mean, though, that would make sense that it is that it is in heaven. I, I was chatting with Pork Chop recently. Oh, and I love Pork Chop. Chop. Pork Chop was like, I had no idea that, you know, they were, it was a blurry filter. She goes, I turned on the TV and I was watching it. And she was like, I thought that my TV was broken. I was like, <laughs> dying. I was like, That's great. No, Pork Chop. <laughs> That's great.